Hey, Ellis with Victoria here, and today we're going to be talking about the basics of how to start a new inspection. So the first thing you want to do is head to the dashboard and go ahead and click on the new inspection button that's in the upper left hand box. And that should take us to the new inspection page. So if you're a multi inspector company, the very first step you're going to want to do is choose the inspector for this inspection. Since I'm just a single inspector company, I'm just going to leave it checked as myself. The next thing you would want to do is choose the date and the time for this inspection. You can change this by just clicking into here and choosing the day and changing the time to whatever you need. Next thing, you're going to want to choose the place that you're doing the inspection at. So I'm just going to pull up an example address for us today. And you'll see that it automatically populated all the information in, including the square feet and the years built. This doesn't always happen with the square feet in the year built, so make sure that you're actually putting those in there correctly so that if you have any modifiers, say for example, 2,500 square feet and larger, uh, you charge an extra $50. If you don't have that 2,500 feet or 2,536 square feet in here, that $50 wouldn't be added onto the price and so you wouldn't be getting paid for doing a larger inspection on a bigger property. As we move down, it's gonna ask for the client information I'm just going to put in test, test at test.com and you see it asks for an email. That email is important so that any automated uh, emails that you have set up would actually go to that email that you put in here. Same thing with the CC email, any of the emails that you need to have sent out will also get forwarded to the CC email. Uh, if you have a husband and a wife for example and they both want to be able to get these emails. You could put one of them into the CC email spot and they would both be getting those emails. Now the, it's important to note that the client that you put in here first, the first name, last name and email, they will be the one who's actually signing off on the agreement. Whoever is the CC email will not be getting the ability to sign. They will still be able to see the agreement and they will still be able to see the inspection details, but they won't be the one signing that. Just important to know that. As we scroll down, you'll see which service we need to select. I'm just going to go ahead and choose the residential inspection because that's the only kind of service I have set up at this time. And you'll see that it put the price that I had already set up for residential inspection in there. And if I had any discount code set up in my settings, this would be the place that you could put that in there. So I set mine as friends and you'll see that it, it automatically put in that $50 off because I set up that discount code before. It is important to note that if you don't type in that discount code exactly how you did, it will not take that $50 off. A good example is if you actually accidentally add a space at the end of the code, it won't work. And so that sometimes happens to people and so just make sure that you watch out for that. As we scroll down, it's gonna be the payment section. You, the require payment to release reports box is already checked for you. This is to protect you so that you're not uh, having any of your reports looked at by the client before they've actually paid. And if for some reason you needed to uncheck that, you're totally able to. You can also put in the payment notes that like the client paid on site, you received cash payment, whatever it is so that you have that history there so that if you ever have a refund request or anything like that, you know how they paid and uh, when they paid or however that is. Client agent and listing agent, you would just click on the agent form and you would fill out that information for both. And then the last section, the miscellaneous section, you could just put in the order ID, how they were referred to you, and then the confirmed inspection box is already checked for you. If you uncheck the confirmed inspection box, no emails will go out, and this will allow you to change the details after saving the inspection, and then you can send out those confirmation emails later. Uh, with the disabled automation notifications, that's automatically unchecked because most people want their automations to be working. They don't want to go in and manually do all that work themselves. But if for some reason you would like to check that off for this inspection, you're totally welcome to. You would just do that right there. And then the very last box is just for internal notes. So if there was like a gate key code to get onto the property or any other type of note you needed to add, that would be a great spot to put that and they're only visible to you. Last step would be to just hit save inspection and it should take us to our inspection details page and boom right there, there it is. Let us know if you have any questions. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out on the bubble. Someone on the team will be happy to help you. Hope you have a great day.